bet365.com Betfair Betfred Coral Ladbrokes Totepool Unibet and William Hill bring you Racing Post Greyhound TV for the 2017 Star Sports Greyhound Derby final. The flag has been waved. It's a new chapter in the history of this fabulous race. A test of speed, perseverance, stamina and alacrity. Who will win? Away they go. It's a great start from a student missile in four. Leading from higher but in one as they go round the bend. Slow away was Murray's act as they come round the turn. Higher but takes over. A student missile in second. Tyra Shea and Claire's rocket come next. Then after these comes Troopy's Acrobat. A student missile gets inside and goes on. It's a student missile, but Tyra Shea is coming at it as they come off the final bend. A student missile staying strong will go and win the Star Sports Greyhound Derby final for 2017, beating Tyra Shea in second place. Landing the spoils was a student missile for Seamus Carhill. What a run from the Greyhound. He produced an unbelievable start. The rank outsider of the field has won at 28 to 1. Wow, it was amazing. I hope you all enjoyed it. Stuart Missile winning last night's derby. It's a regular Sunday here at RPG TV. In the sense, we've got a terrific card at Henlow. Fantastic open racing there. But we also have the derby winners with us this evening. Teresa Carhill joins me. And also Jeff Hill, along with uh, Ali Brown, who as well, to enjoy tonight's programme. We're going to be reviewing all the derby action and catching up with you guys. What has it been the last sort of well, less than 24 hours? What's it been like? Uh, just manic. <laughs> just been working as normal. <laughs> yeah. A bit numb. A bit numb. A bit numb. Has yeah. it sunk in yet? No, at all? not yet. No, it could be. Could take a few days. I think. It's. Um, it. I don't think people. You. You go into sort of a bit of shock, mm. and then it's a delayed reaction. And um, yeah. So I'm. I'm in that mode at the moment. I'm of course very tired. Mm. That's yeah. the other thing. The emotion. Um, plus, of, um, we've been out and about doing other things. So. Afterwards, it's, it really does take some time to sink in and you just don't believe it. Yeah, I think we're all it. pretty tired. You've only had a couple of hours of sleep, Teresa. I know that was a late night in the end, but how, where did that run come from? I mean, we know he's been improving, so I, I suppose in that sense it's not completely out of the blue, but he's beaten Claire's Rocket. He's beaten them all for completely yeah, but fair square. We did, on the night. we did say on Wednesday that with the trap four draw, we thought he would break better. That's what I said uh, when we spoke, didn't I? I said, he is a railer, but he seems to break better from the middle. He'd done the 517 section all the week before, you know, and he was a dog that was just improving and improving. He was just coming along nicely and getting more used to the track. And, you know, there's a few dogs that didn't take to the track, but he really did take to the track. So Better and better. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. for you, I mean, how many years in greyhound racing? Well, I've been in greyhound racing 31 years. And this would have been the dream for all those yeah. years. So yeah. how does it feel now? Yeah, I think we're still sort of a bit in shock, like Jeff says. I still think Seamus is in shock. I still think he's in shock from Bally Manix winning. <laughs> Never mind winning the derby. He was just like, he said to you, unbelievable, know, didn't he? Know, you know, it's just because he had such a will to win. Mm. You know, that's why he was crowned hurdler of the year last yeah. year. He just, you know, does everything right. And it was just uh, even like driving home last night, you know, for two hours drive home and just like we were just talking and just, uh, he still sort of couldn't be believe it. Couldn't believe uh, it. How no. is he today? He's, he's working hard, isn't he? That's yeah, why he's yeah, he's was it, Damien. We've had the owners up this morning and we were feeding the dogs at half seven. We had the bags runners go off to the tracks at half eight this morning and then we've had owners up and it was a matter of uh, an hour sort of before. Then the bags dogs come back and off to Central Park. So he's there tonight? Yeah, we've got three runners there and we've had three trialers there, so. And I mean, for you guys personally, you know, we, we kind of know what we've been through. We get mm. more time to talk on this programme, but mm. it's, been a, it's been a long journey with Bridget. She's been, she was ill for a long time, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah, she was uh, 16 months. She was ill, but the last six weeks were the 
weeks that were, you know, quite testing and we all got called to Ireland at one stage, she had pneumonia and then she came through that, even the two sisters came from Australia, you know, wow. and we and all... And that time she got married, didn't she? Yeah, she got, actually, she got married on the Thursday, she had a scan on the Thursday and they didn't tell her the results on the Thursday. We'd always already been told three weeks previous to that that they thought she'd had roughly four to six weeks to live. But the consultant spoke to her then on the Friday because they even had the, the hospital just wonderful. She'd come up from being engaged and there was a party in the room. All the doctors, nurses, you know, they were, you know, like a, a really nice, oh, just beautiful people they were. And they looked after her so well. And then on the Friday, she got told, so she made plans to get married. We were booked to go on the Monday for the wedding. We got, I was coming back from Toaster after trial in the Derby Dogs, and we got a phone call that she's gone very weak. We're marrying at five o'clock today. So they just all rallied round, got the red star in. She got married at five o'clock, and then we went over on the Monday as normal, and she'd asked to see some friends, and they came in on the Tuesday, and we had a good chat with her on the Tuesday, and she just closed her eyes and went into a coma. It's like she didn't want to prolong anything yeah, else. Yeah. She'd fought and fought mm. and fought. She had Enrica, the eldest sister. She was 25 weeks pregnant, over from Australia, three kids, and she just like she just gave up. She just had had enough. I think I might have saying she's 29 years of age. Yeah, she was, yeah. I mean, it's something yeah. no parent should go through. No, for you and no. Seamus, you yeah. just can't even imagine mm. how awful. Yeah, no, she was it, and she was the youngest girl as well, and because two of them are in Australia. And her beautiful sister that was there last yeah, night. Yeah, that, that's the other one that, that, that's the other one that is left in Ireland, yeah. and they've got a younger brother, James, yeah. and he really has taken it quite bad, because James and Bridget was left sort of behind when the others were going to college and whatever but you know he's he was going to come over but then he decided he wasn't so and the, the derby i know has kind of kept you going your dogs yeah. have been running out of their skin mm. i know you very much believe that bridget's kind of up there mm. looking down mm. on you yeah well that on that tuesday when i had a conversation with her we went in and we had an hour with her before we were going to the airport and that. and I, She was even in good fine fettle then. Like, cause I said to her, you know, like you're going with Grandad Mick and he's got his suitcase. Grandad Mick always had this suitcase full of chocolate. And you know what she said? Feck it, I'm gonna get fat again. <laughs> you know, yeah. she's like, she was in so good yeah. humor. Yeah, yeah. And then I said to her, you know, like we were talking a few weeks ago about you coming to, toaster to the derby because I told her the date you know first of July I said Dr Jerry had to get you well from them yeah. that was the day yeah. where we got told four to six weeks but I just said to her like first of July he's got to get you, you well for that, that. yeah mm. you know giving her something to aim for and she, she turned around and said right you can't come but I said you're going to be our little angel pushing our dogs across the line and she said I will trees I will oh my gosh that is what she said to me and that's what I believe. You speak so well about it, you're making mm. me emotional. But I, It was funny, when even that day when I knew what I was going to say to her, we were at breakfast in the hotel, and uh, Shame said, well, what are you going to say? And I just burst out crying, and I couldn't say it to her, I couldn't tell him. But when I was there talking to her, mm. it just come out all so natural, and she, you know, I just... It sounds like she was yeah. an amazing girl. Yeah, she was. And there's, she had so many Facebook followers and we got so many messages of people because she'd worked in caring and rehab and everything and the girls that she'd worked with set up this fund to send I her. Saw that. Yeah, they had over 40,000, yeah. you know, for this fund to send her to England, Germany or Mexico for treatment. Mm. But what happened, they could not get the tumours to stop growing. Mm. And they had to do that because she was misdiagnosed, first of all. She was treated for the wrong cancer for eight months. So I think it got right, well, you know, into it. And even then, people were saying, oh, claim, claim. She said, I just want to get well. I'm not claiming anything. Let me get well. You know? So, and so how is Seamus? I mean, now it's all over. Do you, mm. Are you going to be OK, the two of you? Yeah, 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 where was it? Right. Yeah, yeah, look, in this game, you're so busy, Julie. Yeah, you will, you, yeah. You was it, no, I was up to Sunderland on Thursday. I yeah. left the kennels at 6 o'clock Thursday morning, took three dogs up to trial, back 9 o'clock at night. We've got Sunderland on Saturday starting. Next after that, you've got the Sussex at Hove starting. And in between that, you've got select stakes. There's so much going on that you just, mm. you are just so busy. 
Kevin Acken said to me, oh, when the derby's finished, you're going to have a break. I said, break? <laughs> Where? <laughs> like the two of you should have a holiday. Jeff, surely, your, your winnings, your prize money is going to be spent on a nice holiday. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> and for you, I mean, you weren't going to be there derby final. You had to cut short a holiday, didn't you? Well, well, it was, I did. Short holiday, it was a wedding. wedding uh, mm. So the wedding uh, was in Croatia, mm. and uh, it was Friday night. And we was up till, I don't know, three o'clock in the morning. We had to get the boat back at 7.30, because from Havar back to Split. To, and I had to change the flights, so the only airport I could get back to in time was Bristol. Then we got a driver from Bristol to drive us down to Northampton, quickly booked in the hotel, quickly got changed, and just about made it. Mm. And, um, and then quickly won the derby, and then quickly came up here, so you <laughs> yeah. must just be uh, in a whirlwind. It's, yeah, that, I'm still living on the adrenaline, I think. Mm. Yeah. I think that's really what it is, because I really, you know, I should be asleep. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's no, it's it's, and that's and that's the thing when you you know you, you look at it and you think, goodness, if I'd missed it. Oh my gosh! No, no, that's, you just could that's not. what no. Mitch said no. last night. He said, "Can you imagine?" He said, no. "If we won now." No. No. <laughs> and I mean, I know at the Derby lunch, you kind of said, "I said to you, what would it feel like if you were holding that trophy above your head?" And you said, "I think the check in my hand would feel very nice, one hundred and seventy-five thousand yeah. pounds." But Last night, there's no thought of the of the prize money, is there? It is just all about that special occasion, the, the yeah. trophy, the prestige of it. You said you were looking at the names on the trophy. Well, going back to 1927, but some of the names that I recognise when, you know, in the 80s when I started to get into the mm. sport, and um, and and you're really humbled the fact that Stuart Missile will be with those names who were legends of the derby, mm. and um, yeah, I think from that point of view, I think that hits home because you start to really appreciate what the dog has achieved and um, I th it was I suppose in every in every aspect when you, you 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 don't expect to win I mean if I look at that um, where I was last night I actually said to my wife and daughter and, and to Mitch my daughter's boyfriend I said if we come in the first three we need to party because that is a fantastic achievement yeah. so I didn't really really ever believe that we would win it yeah I've got to be honest, I wish I could sit here and say, yeah, but... But you didn't believe certainty. you were going to qualify. No. It's actually, you've so got something feet, to do, feet. haven't you? What's that? Oh. Well, wasn't there something, if you walked through go to the semis, you were going around naked, <laughs> oh, and someone, someone said, leave it to the Shamus semis, said, and, then, and then leave it leave to, it to, to the, the final, so... <laughs> <laughs> Remember that next yeah, yeah, absolutely. And James has got to go in the swimming yeah, pool yeah, next I time, so there'd be a there'd be a sponsored yeah. swim and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting, could be interesting. Yeah. So, given the fact you didn't believe you could win, as he came out the traps, so sort of halfway when you had Tyra Shea laying on you, cutting at the third bend, what were your feelings through so, the race? So I was watching it from the tented area, so really where the starting traps opened. Yeah. So I had a back. great view of, mm. of him shooting out the box. And I was, really? That's unbelievable, you know. And so I saw him shoot off, saw him around that bend where higher butt then took it up, but he was in second place. And obviously when he came round to that last bend, or the, the, the second from last bend, of course, you could see Ty Rache. Mm -hmm. And it was coming around, and then Ty Rache took second, started to challenge him. From where I am, I'm only seeing their backsides as they're going towards the line. And, and I thought, well, Ty Rache is going to pick us up. We're going to get second. But that is incredible achievement, how wonderful. And then you just got the feeling we were still going. And I didn't know what happened I was say, because we were outside. Oh, mm. And mm. I thought it was maybe a photo, but I was quite mm. sure in my mind. And maybe it's, it's you, human nature mm. says, oh, we've got beat by Tara Shea, but what a performance. And then someone just said the missile was won. And I, I didn't believe it. I didn't, <laughs> what did you do? I, I didn't take that first person's word. Mm. I had to hear it again mm -hmm. from someone else before mm -hmm. I really, mm. you know, um, and, and oh, uh, incredible, incredible. Well, I, I had uh, arranged with one of the parading girls that does the starting as well, that she was covering the first bend, and I said to her, if we're lucky enough for one of the dogs to win, will you come and take the other back dog back to the paddock so we can go things? So I had already that arranged so you that so, the, uh, yeah the so she was sitting down so I sorted out acrobat yeah. and that and then I, she, she took, took it back him off yeah so that's, you could all enjoy yeah it. so that's why I wasn't first of all yeah. at the pickup because yeah. I had to get acrobat yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. sorted out first you know well your kennel hand was pretty delighted with yeah, him with the yeah I know he, he came in the last ride didn't he last man didn't he Jeff I eh? did indeed you see. <laughs> 
I'd walked um, a suit missile all the way yeah. through, yeah. and like, well, I'd done most of the Derby dogs all the way through. It was only when there was doubles that I couldn't like do, like um, Steve had done uh, Teddy twice, mm -hmm. and I'd had Con, and I thought, oh, I've got to go with Teddy, because Teddy, when he came in, had no character, and was just sort of like, thing. he's built up a character, and me and him, you know, and he wags his tail and goes mad. You see, even on, when I brought him out last night, he was spinning, and you know, and I just, with Mickey, He's not one that... He's boisterous, isn't he? Noisy, you said. Yeah, but that's what we were saying coming up in the lift. Me and Seamus only really said about it last night. Come now, I said, do you know what? I said, we never put Mickey in the porter mag today. He said, no, he didn't. Usually you give him his race feed, he goes out in the paddock and he will give it. So you end up putting him in the porter mag and he just lies there and chills. Where if he's in his kennel, he's giving it. Yeah. But yesterday he didn't. They'd gone for the tea break, come back. All the dogs went out again and then we loaded the van and he... He was just behaving? Yeah. Like he knew? Yeah, yeah. Strange, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Ali, you and I both backed Harry Shane to post at 33 to 1. And obviously he came second just. But, uh, I mean, what did you make of that performance from, from uh, Missile? Well, to, to hold off... Um you know, Tara Shea from yeah. the position around the second bend was an incredible performance. Mm. So we've seen lots of, um, you know, pace, good pace at Harlow from uh, Astute Missile running behind uh, Romanov and, and others and, and sh you know, running very, very well. But to break like that in the final, um, as a punter, the one dog I didn't want in front of Tara <laughs> Shea was Astute Missile. Mm. Had a, but broke brilliantly. Um, you wouldn't have, wouldn't have thought that could have perhaps broken ahead of uh, higher butt at the start, but uh, held a great position. And, uh, you know, it was, it, was the, it was the run at the third bend that really, really mm. won it. Cut the bend, brave at the third bend, and, uh, and a good winner. And I think, you know, even past the line, it wasn't, you know, if you've been 600 no, yards, you probably still in front. So, yeah. mm. uh, fantastic run. Got for both of you, I'm guessing your phones probably haven't stopped. Have you had lots of messages of support and congratulations? Emails, texts, Twitters. <laughs> <laughs> you name it, messenger. Well, that was the other thing on the Twitter, wasn't it? Mm, the trending, mm, it was mm. the top trending five. Trending on Twitter? I don't mm, we mm. ever had great amazing trending mm, on Twitter. Mm, Astute, Astute Missile mm, was number five on Twitter. Mm, mm. Yeah, my daughter told me that last night and I said, is that, is that big? <laughs> she, said, she said, that's huge. I think she was trying to refer to me as a dinosaur or something. And that was like, she said, that is huge. She says, that's just mm. not unheard of. So. Well, I, think, I think partly as well helped by the whole experience of Toaster. Everybody was tweeting mm. about Toaster. I've seen so many tweets about Toaster. It's well, it, yeah, but wasn't it electric? Uh, just, huh? They've just like done nothing. everything I, I described it as going dog racing, rolled into Glastonbury, rolled into Ibiza mm, when Joe mm, Wiley was DJing mm, because mm. that whole area was... I don't mm. think people realised because obviously Sky was off air by then. That whole mm. area was packed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went down and had a dance and there's mm. like mm. Robert Brinkley was there bopping away and every... You know, it's just mm. unbelievable. Mm. I'm, I don't know what you would say. Mm. Kevin Hennessy said this and I would agree. Better than Irish Derby final night. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. And that's yeah. a huge statement, isn't mm, it? I mm, never thought mm, I would say mm. I've been dog racing in England and it betters Irish Derby final. But night. we've got to keep it going. That's the thing now. We've got to get sponsors in to keep Toaster going. Yes. You know, know. It, they, 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 really they do everything support. right. So they, really do. they need more competitions yeah. there. We were talking on Wednesday about the competitions that have gone, the Pall Mall, the Blue Ribbon, like that. Yeah, you know, it's a matter of getting yeah, sponsors. Mm. You know, because they do everything right. They treat their sponsors well. They look after everybody well there, you know, from the paddock staff to the racing office. Everybody does a professional job there. Yeah. So. They've done amazingly. And uh, I'm quite happy to say now, barring something amazing happening before the end of the year, my services of, of the, to the industry mm. for this year will definitely be a nomination for Lord Heskis and Kevin Ackerman, mm. who I don't actually think gets the credit he deserves. He no, he doesn't. I, I yeah, I had a good chat with Kevin on Wednesday and even last night as well, you know, so because I even said to Scotty at William Hill, yeah. you know, you said that <laughs> you were going to think you better sponsor this puppy derby. There's yeah. a puppy derby yes. there and they're looking for a sponsor. I said you better get well, onto you the wing. You would think people would be jumping yeah. right now. But. Yeah, you know. We will see. We all need to support Toaster, that's for sure. It was an amazing night. We'll uh, have lots more derby chat throughout the evening, as I'm sure you uh, you realise. But uh, let's get confirmation of the live racing we've got for you tonight because uh, don't forget, Teresa is also a champion tipster and we can test out Jeff's uh, tipping prowess as well.